Hello and welcome to another episode. We're going to be working on something interesting today. This comes from my sister with a request for a complete overhaul. For those not familiar, this is a Perkins Brailler. This is uh, actually a very popular uh, unit as far as Brailers go or Brailers that are not run under electrical power. This model has been around a, a very good long time with uh, very little modification over I think I think well over a hundred years at this point, I would say, if not getting close. Um, my sister back in the day uh, volunteered during school to uh, transcribe notes, I believe, into Braille uh, for blind folks. And she did for this have her own personal Brailler. This is kind of like a, a, a it's a typewriter, right, is what it is. That, that type of Braille, obviously, it, it appeared to me initially uh, in looking at it to, to look more like a stenography machine, right? Because of the limited amount of keys. But what it actually does is, is it, it punches the, uh, the limited number of dots that appear on the Braille matrix at one time. Therefore, it only needs the, the maximum number of keys required uh, to do that over here and then there's I believe a space bar in the middle. I don't know Braille uh, so I don't really know much about it. I've only uh, studied as much as I need to know to conduct service on this device. I'll further state that I will be doing the official factory maintenance procedure on this device. So if you have a, a Perkins Brailler and you want to conduct the factory maintenance procedure with the factory maintenance items that are going to be used to do this, I will be using them in this video. So let's get started on this, the Perkin Brailler maintenance overhaul. Some of the things that I will be using for this task is going to be some aerolithium grease. I have clock oil. I have watch oil. I have 1K kerosene. The kerosene portion will be done outside denatured alcohol, or isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna have an assortment of brushes depending on the application at hand. And of course the screwdriver depending on the application at hand and containers to store the screws and parts as needed. So ultimately what we're gonna to wanna to do is remove the outer cover of this unit. And the first thing what we're gonna to wanna to do to achieve that is the removal of the bottom cover. I'm gonna gently turn this over. And we can see that it sits nice and flat, just like that. There are uh, 11 screws right here. Phillips, using a small Phillips head screwdriver, I will remove the screws from the unit. Uh, careful to support the unit when you do this, or it will lunge forward. Then we'll remove this piece of particle board Put it off to the side somewhere safe. Right off the bat, before anything, I could see how this is a problem. This piece of paper uh, stuck in here. Probably nothing terrible, right? But stuff like this can, can bind up a unit. So I'm pulling that out now. Now we're gonna turn it back over. And the next thing that I'm going to do is remove these paper feed knobs these right here found on both sides of the machine. As I remove each one, put the screw back in so these parts don't get lost. Same thing applies for the other side. Now I'm gonna remove this top plate of the unit with the handle on it. There are six screws, three on each side. This is one, two, three on this side. Note that the rear screw is a different size than the front two screws. Obviously the same procedure will happen on this side of the machine. With that, the cover lifts right off. Put that off to the side. It's important to know that for each of these six screws, the thread work is, is such that there are inserts here. Now, the inserts are not loose by any means. It may be held in by some sort of glue or what have you, but they're not permanently affixed so it is possible that when you move this thing around and flip it over they can fall out so keep that in mind also I like to group screws together as sets if I know there's gonna be a lot of screws I could just mark this as the screws for the top cover and that way I don't have to figure out what goes where later if I then turn the machine around as is 
the back of the unit is this little piece here, this, this sort of gnarled round wheel. This is called a paper stop. And I lift it right out. It just came right out of here. And I'm going to put that with my parts. That needs to come out now. Now I'm going to remove this back plate. It has four screws right here. Take that out now. Four screws removed. That back plate comes right off with all these pieces, the associated bell. I think it's bell. Yep, there's the bell. And I'll put that off to the side. I'm gonna flip the unit back around. I'm going to remove the carriage lever assembly. We can see that there is a screw right here that I'm going to remove. I'm trying not to drop. There's also a washer, so be careful. I've got the screw on the washer. I'm going to slide this right out, just like that. And I'm going to put the screw and washer right back in so it doesn't get lost. There we go. I'm going to store it just like that. Again, we turn the barrel over this time so that the back is facing me, just like this. It, it may lean a bit forward. And we can see all the way up front in the barrel right here, all the way up front, we have two screws. Screw over here, and a screw over here. What we're going to do is remove this screw and just loosen this one. We're going to do that now. So that one is removed, and this one will only be loosened. There we go. With that, I should be able to remove the front apron. Just slides out just like that. I'm going to put that screw back in so it doesn't get lost. Turn the unit back over. We can see now the apron's removed. Now I'll remove these two front plate attaching screws and lift off the front plate. Put that plate somewhere safe. This is considered to be the full disassembly of the unit for uh, cleaning and maintenance. Here's all my screws from the different sections and the parts categorized in the bowl here. This thing clearly hasn't seen uh, any, any lubrication quite a while. I also see some some uh, looks like metal shavings. I don't know if that's just from from external wear, uh, from the from the case, something rubbing in the case, or what have you. So I'm going to take a look at that. What I do see, however, is uh, just the the travel. Like we can see, the space bar seems to work relatively okay on these where there used to be grease. There is a delay, it's slow to react, where, where some of them move. A little faster than others. See like that one? There's an example. This button at the end here doesn't even move down. Quite frankly, I'm not sure what it does, so I'm not inclined to uh, uh, push it just yet. The chain has no lubrication on it. Uh, the main shaft has no lubrication on it. You see that right there, right? So yeah, this thing probably hasn't seen any service at all since the date was bought. You can see that chain has nothing on there. The other side uh, reminiscent of some teletypes. You can see how the different metal rods move to, to actuate the different uh, pushing of the pins here uh, to depress the holes into the paper or the bumps into the paper. You can see all that's accumulated here on the end. And these are really, really grimy. They're, they're coated with all sorts of garbage. And I could almost feel them getting stuck here in these plates right over here so this is all going to have to be cleaned out obviously i wanted to point out some of these uh finer details before we get started with that let alone the the dust and and caked up grease and all of the other positions on this unit just an example though i do i do take an envelope right here i just want to make sure that all of the pins work there's the left side and now the right side it makes up the six dots you feel that right there so the mechanics with, within this are, are working good. My first order of business for the cleaning project is going to be removing dust that's accumulated with, with a brush, right? And I'm just trying to get all this loose dust out of here. Here on the, the cams, 
just anywhere where I could find it, loose dust has collected in the unit. Where this dust and grease is uh, kicked up on the ends here, I'm just removing that with a paper towel. We could also see on the other side, do the same thing right quick. Get some of this, this metal out of here. I wonder what those little shavings were. Let's see, there's a foot missing that'll have to be replaced. So I've purchased an aluminum pan. This is uh, one I picked up at the supermarket and this pan will be used for the next event. And I've got my kerosene. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this bottle of kerosene and I'm gonna pour some into the pan. Try not to splash any and do this outside. Uh, kerosene smells horrendous, right? Do not need a lot just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And I want to tell you what I do in working with this kerosene, though you don't, don't have to, but you might want to consider it. I have a glass jar and a coffee filter. Depending on how dirty this kerosene gets, I might elect to, to filter this into the jar and re-pour it in and continue. Though when I'm finished, I might elect to uh, filter it and store it, let whatever's in there separate, and then reuse the kerosene. Now I'm gonna take the brailler and I'm going to place it into the pan just like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use the brush to clean this entire unit. I'm gonna cover it from top to bottom with the kerosene. Every single part is gonna be uh, cleaned to remove uh, dirt and debris from here. So I'm gonna start doing this now. Uh, dipping it in the kerosene, of course, to clean the brush as I go along. If I have to move the carriage, obviously, you know, I could move the carriage out of the way to get where I need to go. As we can see down here, very dirty. And kerosene does a, a good job of breaking this up. I'm gonna bring this over to the end here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down the cam rods. I'm gonna to try to push down the cam rods like that. You can see that they're all raised. Now I'm gonna get the kerosene in between them, just like that. Also trying to uh, get under here. These are the, uh, the stylus blocks on both sides of the cam rods. Clean that out too. You can see some dirt lift up just like that when I do that. I find that agitation brings a lot of that dirt up top. Let's see. Some of that dirt comes up and then I just get it in the fluid, filter that out later, bring it back, do it again. Now I flip the uh, pan around so that it is facing forward and I'm, I'm washing the chain now over and under. There's also a ratchet under here that is absolutely filthy that I'm getting just, just out of view. And here's that ratchet that I'm cleaning that was just filled with dirt. You can see what it looked like before it was cleaned. Just get that now. There it is. Continue again with the chain and the sprocket. Also this round carriage tube that the mechanism rides on is cleaned. There's a lot of gunk at the end of the tube. You can see right there. So it's important that that's removed. I'm sure it'll be on the other side as well. And there it is. 
from this side. Now we're going to work on the individual key slots where the remnants of the old grease was. A lot of dirt got trapped in there, so I'm going to do just one at a time. Getting that all out of there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the keys a bunch of times just to work everything in. I decided before continuing that I was going to filter the kerosene because look, it is nasty. It's dark, it's got a ton of dirt in there and I just don't feel like using that dirt to clean everything. So I'm just gonna filter it through and then pour it right back in. So I'm taking a break here. We're not going for sparkling clean, but we're not trying to put dust and hair right back into the system we just cleaned out. On the bottom of the pan, I, I just clean out with a paper towel, get out all that debris. Wait for the filter to complete. Give it a few minutes. And then we have everything that's caught from the machine. I'll grab a new filter for the next round. Pour this right back in. Nice and clean. We continue with the machine turned over in this manner. What we're going to do next is clean this area right here. We're going to get these and down here as well, these linkages. Then what we want to do is having that a carriage all the way to the left. You can see it right here. We want to pull it to the left so this pole opens up like that. You see? And then when it's open, we're gonna clean this in and around here to remove any oil or debris. Also here we have the backspace pawl. This one needs to be actuated so it can be cleaned. The spring, the mechanism. Also while I have it flipped over, I'm just taking some time to clean any areas that have dirt on them that I could see from down here. No particular order. We're going to pay specific attention to this area here at the bottom of the rubber feed roller. So we're going to clean this now, degrease it. That pawl and ratchet right at the base of the rubber roller. You can see that. Also, you see this flat round disc right here accumulates a lot of dirt while cleaning. I just add enough solvent onto that disc that holds all these rods and just sort of pours right down into the pan and that comes clean. Now I'm just taking a final final inspection here really and seeing if there's anything that I missed. I'm getting it now. And this is just going to be my last go through uh, before we move to the next phase. The other side is pretty much the same with regard to uh, uh, flushing out this piece right here so it doesn't attract any dirt. And that came clean and I, I don't see anything else. I believe I've gotten everything at this point. So what I'm going to do now is I've just set this up to sit on the pan here 10 or 15 minutes. I'm just going to let it drip dry. The pan is now emptied, wiped out with a paper towel, go directly into recycle, no waste. The kerosene out of the pan went through the first filter into the glass jar. This is the uh, residue that was left behind. And what is now in the glass jar gets filtered again through another filter back into my uh, kerosene can to be used again for cleaning without any waste. Given the opportunity, I would recommend that you let something like this uh, drip dry outside overnight uh, if need be.